All right, all right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Giving a great shout out to the YouTube families. I'm giving God all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. Hope everybody's doing well. To those who's been following along with Paul and Timothy, I told y'all I was going to do this little series um, that the Lord laid in my spirit to do. And in the first video, I talked about evil doers, evil doers, evil people, false teachers. Now what I want to do is go to chapter 2. And I want to go to chapter 2 of 2 Timothy, verses um, 1 through 13. And the title of this video is Stand Strong and Be Ready to Suffer. Stand Strong. Father God, I come now in Jesus' name thanking you, Lord, for so much. Thanking you, Lord, for light, health, and strength. And I pray, Lord, that this word help all of us, touch all of us. Not only do we just read it, listen at it, Lord, but follow it and be doers of it. In Jesus' name, amen. If you got your Bibles or if you just want to listen along, like I said, I'm going to 2 Timothy chapter 2, 1 through 13. And the word of God reads, it says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that, is it, that it is in Jesus Christ. And then it says, And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. And if you know anything about Paul and Timothy, Paul is like a father to Timothy in so many ways. And Paul wrote to encourage Timothy, let Timothy know what he was going to be coming up against, pretty much how to continue on as Paul got into his, his little last stages. He knew that his time was, you know, running out. And when one time run out, it's always somebody else that have to take over. Somebody else have to leave, just like when Moses had to leave, when he left, when he passed on, Joshua had to take over. And there shouldn't be no fear in you when you get ready to take over. But not to jump off and all that, but I want to pause right there because that is very important. Somebody always have to take over. And it says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And then it says, No man that word entangled himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier. And then verse 5 says, And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is not crowned except he strive lawfully. 6 says, The, hub, the husband man, excuse me, the husband man that labor it most must be first partake of the fruits. 7 says, Consider what I say, and the Lord give the understanding in all things. Yes, he does. 8 says, Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of who David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. 9 says, Wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. And verse 10 says, Therefore I undo all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus, which eternal glory. Excuse me, with eternal glory. Verse 11 says, It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. Mm. 12 says, If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. It's some powerful stuff. And then 13, that's where I'm going to stop. It says, if we believe not, yet he abided faithful, he cannot deny himself. Now, y'all know what I'm doing is going scripture by scripture. Then I'm coming back. Now we're going to go through 1 through 13 kind of slowly. And just bear with me on this beautiful morning. It's about 5 in the morning. And on this beautiful Friday, to God be the glory. When you look at verse 1, if you got your Bibles or if you're just listening, Paul is pretty much telling Timothy, be strong. But see, but what Paul is saying is not just with natural strength. This is the power to live the Christian life, walk the walk. Timothy can only get his power by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. His grace is his kindness of Christ. He gives strength to those who ask him for it. See, with the help of the Lord, 
people, we got so much power. So Paul is telling Timothy, you got to be strong. And JT is telling you Christians, if you're listening in this video, you have to be strong, be bold, and be willing to suffer for Christ. Because we are living in times where a lot of people are just going to reject God. They don't want to hear the truth. We are living in times where there's so much jealousy. We are living in times where there's so much envy, so much hatred on the land. Nobody is hardly forgiven. We are living in some terrible times. And as you move down to verse 2, Paul had taught Timothy the true word of God. He showed him what to believe. Hmm. what a Christian should believe. He had taught him how Christians should live. Uh-oh. See, it's so important to be a doer of God's word because there was many Christians there when Paul taught these things. These are witnesses to all the truth when Paul spoke. But like nowadays, like we say, it's some going to hear and some going to reject. Timothy's task was to preach that gospel and to teach the truth in the church of Ephesus. And if you know anything about Ephesus, it, it, it wasn't easy to deal with. And Paul tells Timothy that, stand tall. You got to spread that gospel and tell the truth regardless. You got to stand when won't nobody else stand. You have to be able to spread the message and, te and teach the people, Timothy. And that's what we must do. We must just tell the truth regardless of how much it might hurt somebody. When you move to verse 3, the Christian life, hmm, Paul was pretty much telling Timothy it's like a war because there's so many enemies who are going to fight against you. All followers of Christ must be prepared to suffer for what they believe. Let me say that again because people overlook this. All followers of Christ must be prepared to to suffer for what they believe in. A lot of people think, oh, I'm saved now. Ain't nobody going to mess with me. Things are going to go good. Let me tell you something. When you start following Christ, your life going to become very difficult. When you followed the world, things became easier. So Paul tell Timothy to join with me and other Christians and take a share of this suffering. We must serve as a, a, a strong warrior and fight against this devil. And his, and his devilish friends, the posse of the Antichrist. Christians, we need to stand. Instead of wasting all your energy, Christians fighting against each other, come together and fight against the forces of evil. As you move on to verse 4, what's going on is that a soldier in the fight, hmm, he need to be prepared and focus on his task. He must not let anything disturb him nor stop him. How many of y'all consider yourself as a soldier in the army of the Lord? He must put all his effort into the fight. Soldiers, just like soldiers, Christians should work hard to do what the Lord say. You shouldn't be getting involved in things that, that's going to hinder you and keep you further away from God. Your main purpose should be to live this life to please the Lord and help others, encourage others to come to Christ. But how are we going to do that if we don't do it ourselves? Moving right along to verse 5. Try not to make this too long, but just bear with me. Verse 5 and pretty much anyone who wants to run this race. Hmm, let me get back to this race. When you run a race, what do you do? You train for it. You train hard. And you have a chance at winning. You gotta, you got to prepare yourself. And this is what Paul is telling Timothy and telling us that we need to get ready. See, we're not running this race to win no gold medal. We're trying to get the eternal life. Good God Almighty. To win that crown, that that oh man, to 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 struggle for Christ is a blessing. But most people don't want to hear that part. So Paul is saying that the Christian life is like a race. And when you move on to verse 6, you can compare it with a farmer. See, a good farmer, a hard-working farmer, has to work hard. He go out there and he prepare the ground and, and he sow the seed. He has to make sure that everything is lined up right, that the plants got enough water. Whatever he's planting, it got to be right. 
and he has to have clear vision. That way, when the harvest comes, when they gather, when he gathers the crops, everything pays off. He has done all his work for the owner of the farm. As his reward, he should have the first share of the crops. How many of us are acting like a farmer? See, I learn a lot when I'm in the country. You'll learn a lot of patience. Christians are like the farmer. We should be doing hard work for what the Lord wants. See, when you have been doing work, good work and laboring hard, the results of that good work will be like a harvest, my brothers and sisters. The Lord will bless those who have worked hard for him, even though when you're struggling, you seem like you just ain't going to never come out of it, but it's, you're going to come out of it on top, and you're going to be on God's time. If we could learn about truly being blessed and the blessings that's all the eternal life, we, we so caught up in this life in flesh and want man rewards, but if we could just learn to hold on and keep on fighting in this race, there is a bigger blessing, an eternal blessing, even promise you crowns. The Lord will give rewards to them in the life. Oh, that is future. Let me move on to verse 7. I just I just got a little happy, boy, thinking about that. Verse 7, what's going on is Timothy. Hmm, is to think about a soldier, the athlete, and the farmer. He should learn the lessons that we can learn from each of them. See, when you look at an athlete, they train hard. A soldier fight hard. Tupac made a statement said that I'd rather die like a man than to live like a coward. He also said in one of his songs, I'd rather be judged by 12 than to be carried by six. How strong are we right now for the Lord? But the question is, what are you dying for? Because there is no death in Christ. I love how, how Paul always compared with the Olympics and 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 a soldier and a farmer and how we need to get it right, things we need to do. The farmer has to work hard if there is to be good harvest. So Christians must have this same attitude and work hard. Verse 8, we're almost through. It might take a little longer, but we're getting there. When Paul writes, <laughs> here's a similar to what he wrote in Romans. When you go back to uh, Romans 1, 3 and 4, I believe. There he wrote that the Holy Spirit declared Jesus to be the Son of God. He did this when God raised Jesus from the dead. Jesus is the Son of God. Timothy, you ought to remember, hmm, not a dead Christ, but the living Lord. Christian folks, we ought to remember that we don't serve a dead Savior. We don't serve a weak God. Jesus suffered and he died. But now he is alive. He's been alive. And he lives in me. He lives in you. This should encourage you. It's just like it encouraged Timothy. Timothy did well, brothers and sisters. Young Timothy was, was, was on that journey and he did well. Woo. Paul was encouraging Timothy to suffer just like I did. See, we don't want to hear that word, suffer. The fact that Jesus died and rose again is, is the heart of the gospel. This is the good news that Paul preached. And Paul got beat up, thrown in prison, stoned for the gospel. Same thing Paul used to do when he was Saul came back on him in so many ways. But when you move on to verse 9, Paul urged Timothy to keep spread, he spread that gospel. Suffer. Paul was telling Timothy about his own personal experience. And he was letting him know, I preach the good news anyway. I had to suffer behind it, Timothy, but I preached it. I walked it. He was now in prison and in chains. We see where Paul was locked up, but he still wrote. wrote. I like to say Paul had a prison ministry. Paul was no longer free, but... But that did not stop him from spreading the gospel. Oh, good God Almighty. Verse 10, Paul is writing. In his writing, when you look at it, he was saying, suffer for the good news. That's because God saved those 
whom he has chosen by his gospel. So Paul is suffering for them so that they may believe in Jesus Christ. How many of us are actually going outside of the church building? Going and, and trying to reach somebody. Matter of fact, you ain't even got to go in the building. You got people in your own family that need reaching out to. Now, let's be real. Some of them just going to keep rejecting. But there are some that need to be reached out to. But we seem like, oh, we want to be the only ones that make it into heaven. Good God Almighty. When you move on to verse 11, Paul mm, says that the message of these words is true. If we have died with him, we shall also live with him. Verse 12, if we do not give up, we will also govern with him. If we refuse him, we also ref he will also refuse us. If we do not believe, he will remain true. He cannot deny who he is. Good God Almighty. Verse 12 is, is, is very powerful to me. All of these, these scriptures are very powerful to me. Because we must understand in this life, we got a race to run. And in this life, it's going to be many people come up against us. And in this life, most of your family will turn their back on you. And in this life, if people are not are going to get on one accord and, and, and do what Jesus say do, you need to get off and around them people. And follow God, not man. But God bless you and God keep you. I hope this could be a blessing as it was for me to do this because I don't do videos for fun. I learn so much and, and God is, is always in the blessing business. And he told me to spread the word. And I'm going to keep spreading the word. And I hope y'all are doing well and have a beautiful, blessed day.